Hi everyone, Spider-Man1991 here to talk about, well, some movies I saw this month. A couple months ago, well, two months ago really, when I mentioned stuff about the trailers for Green Lantern, X-Men First Class, I got some people asking whether I was going to review those movies. I said maybe, so I figured, what the hell, I'll just review those and some other movies I saw. Um, was going to review Thor after I saw it, like, two weeks ago, but some stuff kept getting in the way. Mostly Doctor Who related. Can't wait for that finale. Uh, anyways. Time to get to work on some... Time to review Thor. Uh, Thor had an amazing story. It's about a man who's trying to regain not just his godlike powers, but really his father's respect so that he can prove that he's worth a uh, worthy heir for his, for the throne of Asgard. Um, I want to apologize in advance for my chair. It's old and it squeaks. Um, also, Thor had brilliant acting. Uh, I had, if I had to choose my two top favorite actors, I would go with Chris Hemsworth as Thor who portrayed the character both arrogant at the beginning and then sort of humble and more heroic towards the end. And also, Anthony Hopkins is Odin. I mean, just looking at the guy, if you've ever, well, seen Odin, what he looks like in the comics, and then if you've seen Anthony Hopkins as Odin in the movie, you know that's almost a direct representation, and it is amazing. Ugh. Also, the CGI team deserves as much credit as the actors because they really brought the movie to life. Okay, they made Asgard look like it was taken out of a Jack Kirby comic. That's probably the phrase that's been going around about the way Asgard looks. It's almost as if it's out of a Jack Kirby comic. It's really amazing. Plus, how, plus all the special effects that went to the fight scenes, like with the Destroyer, when Thor fought the Destroyer in Oklahoma or New Mexico. Yeah, it was New Mexico in the film. Film That was a great fight scene. Also, Stanley does make a cameo, but y'all have to keep keep your eye out for it. It's in somewhere after Thor falls to Earth, and so does the hammer. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Thor, like the past two Iron Man films, are all building up to the Avengers movie. And there are several more hints to the Avengers movie in, in Thor. Uh, the first hint would probably be the Infinity Gauntlet, which is seen in Odin's Weapons Vault. You don't exactly see the full gauntlet, but you can get a good view of it from like from where Odin's walking by. You can sort of see a, see something that looks like a glove. And if you've seen the pictures from San Diego Comic-Con last year, then you know that Marvel made an Infinity Gauntlet for the movies. So, And now there's been a rumor going around that Loki and Thanos are going to be the are going to be the villains for the Avengers movie. Another teaser was was another little teaser was from a scene that was cut from the movie, which was when Doctor Eric Selvig, Jane Foster's uh, colleague, after their equipment was taken, said he could contact someone who might help them out. Uh, when he went to the library to write that email, uh, they were supposed to like show that he was writing to Dr. Hank Pym, which comic fans should know is Giant Man. Uh, also, if you didn't realize it, Hawkeye was in the movie too. He appeared as sort of a cameo-like small role as the guy with the bow and arrow who's getting ready to take Thor out when he was trying to get to the hammer. And, as usual, a post credit scene involving Nick Fury... Who's telling Doctor? Er who's telling Eric about the new object they found, which is the Cosmic Cube, which is also a hint for what's in store for Captain America. The Cosmic Cube is basically uh, an object that helps that can make let let the user alter or change reality and time in his or her image. It's the main. It's basically the object of desire for the Red Skull, and. And also, apparently, Dr. Selvig may be under the control of Loki. That's something in store. Overall, Thor was an amazing movie, brilliant acting, amazing special effects, and a fantastic story. 
Uh, I'd give Thor about four and a half stars out of five. Next movie I saw, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Uh, usually the fourth movie in a franchise is what pretty much kills it. Um, it says that the studio's done with it, but that's not the case with with Pirates 4. I mean, it still shows that there's still some idea. Disney and Jerry Bruckheimer still have some ideas left for this, for the Jack Sparrow. Uh, one thing, the main uh, treasure of this movie is the Fountain of Youth, and it's an interesting new take on it. Normally, from what all the stories I've been told about the Fountain of Youth are just basically, you go in, drink some water, you're immortal. Now, apparently, you need to get these two special chalices and the tear of a mermaid and you need two people to get the fountain to work you fill both chalices with water put the mermaid tear in one and the person who drinks the tear is and the person who drinks the tear gets the life of gets the years lived by the person who drank just the regular water well technically it has not regular water but fountain water it's complicated. Uh, sorry if I spoiled the movie, though. I should have said spoiler alert. Uh. Johnny Depp and Jeffrey Rush both deliver amazing performances in this movie as both as Jack Sparrow and Hector Barbosa, respectively. And also a new character, and the new character's Blackbeard, played by Ian McShane, is very intimidating because, because he definitely shows Blackbeard as a guy you don't want to mess with. You don't want to double-cross him. I don't even think you want to be in the same room as Blackbeard. And Penelope Cruz, too. She did an amazing job as Jack Sparrow's love interest, Angelica. She portray she definitely brought to life a character that loves Jack Sparrow, and Jack kind of loves her back, sort of. But he, d but Jack doesn't want to admit he loves her. No, no, no. Jack, Jack loves the ocean. So he says. Uh... My main disappointments with this movie was the Black Pearl. Uh, the Black Pearl was ta well. When we last left left off, Jack was marooned and Barbosa took back the Black Pearl. Now, Jack, now uh, Blackbeard took the pearl, but he didn't take the ship. He shrunk it down in a bottle. Yeah, he actually shrunk the ship down and put it in a bottle. I don't even know. They never really explained that. Or how Blackbeard was able to control the ship with his sword. I mean, there's no real explanation behind how Blackbeard's able to do his magic spells, per se. That was main pro my the one thing of that I didn't like about it. Plus, a lot of time a lot of time has passed it has apparently passed between the third movie and this one because. Now Barbosa is working for the king after the pearl was taken, and he wants revenge on Blackbeard. Oh, and spoiler alert: Barbosa lost the leg. Uh, prior to the movie, though, just want to put that out. Uh, overall, it, Black, Pirates of the Caribbean Four. It's still a great movie, but you are you still might feel a little lost, and you might feel cheated out of the explanation behind Blackbeard's magic. So, yeah, I give Pirates 4 three and a half out of five stars. And the most recent movie I saw was The Hangover Part 2. Needless to say, it's just like the first one. I mean, just a few minor details are different, but it's almost exactly the same as the first movie, except instead of losing their friend Doug, they lose, their fr they lose Stu's soon-to-be brother-in-law, Teddy. Yeah, I mean it's great to see all the act, all the wolf, the wolf pack back together. But I kind of wish they included Doug in the search for Teddy. I mean that would have been fun to see Doug kind of helping him out and see all four of them interact. Because I mean it's supposed to be the four guy. I mean the four of them are supposed to be the good friends here and the main group. And I mean yeah, last movie they did lose Doug, and I mean just Stu, Phil, and Alan were pretty funny, but. I kind of looked forward to that because I knew they wouldn't lose Doug and I thought it would have been great if we could see him interact more, but 
No, it was just like the first one. It was just Stu, Alan, and Phil going to find Stu, going to find who they lost. Teddy. Stu. Uh, at this point, though, for the Hangover franchise, I think they should either end it right here. Just don't make a third movie. Or if they do make a third movie, come on, change it up a bit. Don't make it... I mean, yeah, the formula works, but not if you're going to do it three times in a row. I mean, yeah, that's what I have to say. Uh, overall, though, I give The Hangover Part 2 four out of five stars. Okay? And that's all for my movie reviews. Uh, this week, X-Men First Class is going to be released this Friday. I, unfortunately, am not going to be able to see it till next week because I promised a friend of mine that I'd see it with him next week. And it's just been kind of our thing to do this summer, just hang out and go to movies. That's kind of our summer tradition. And I, and plus he, whenever I, plus my friends usually want me to go with them to comic movies because I can usually explain if there's any sort of uh, comic Easter egg, so to speak. And that's all I have to say. Spider-Man 1991 saying, see you later.